A middle-aged couple finally finds their dream home in the quiet suburbs, but what they discover in the basement could alter their lives for better or worse. In his office, insurance broker Alain Duval is playing a game on the computer. When his wife suddenly calls him on his landline to remind him about their open house appointment, Alain leaves the office as soon as he realizes he's late and drives to the house's location, where his wife, Marie, and the real estate agent, Frank Chez, are waiting. Shortly after, Frank invites the couple to view the lovely and spacious house, starting with the living room and then the kitchen. When they reach the bedroom, Marie notices a wrecked car from the window, which the agent assures her will be taken care of before they move in. Afterward, Frank takes the couple to the basement, where he reveals the highlight of the house, a duct that has a life-changing feature. To show them what he means, he asks the confused couple to go down the dark passage with him. At first, Marie is hesitant, but Alan convinces her to join them. As they descend, Frank reminds Marie to close the hatch so that the duct's feature will work. Upon reaching the end of the duct, they strangely find themselves in the room upstairs. Alan immediately goes to the veranda, curious why it's morning already. Meanwhile, Marie is confused about where she is, prompting the agent to explain that they are still in the same house and that what happened is normal. After the house viewing, Frank sits with the perplexed couple outside and reveals that going down the duct causes a person to time travel 12 hours into the future. He explains that they entered the dock the previous night at 8.15 p.m. and upon checking the time, it's now 8.27 a.m. the following day, proving that 12 hours had elapsed. Upon hearing this, Marie still has trouble wrapping her head around the dock's time travel feature. On the other hand, Alan is open about the time travel concept but questions how going down the dock sends them back above ground. However, Frank doesn't directly answer the confusing question. Instead, he continues his previous explanation, adding that the 12-hour time jump isn't the only effect descending the duct has on a person. Frank then informs the couple that he has another serious offer for the house, pressuring them to make a quick decision if they are really interested in purchasing it. When Frank leaves, the couple agrees to discuss their final decision when they get home in their separate cars. Before Marie heads home, she stops on the side of a street, where she sees two children passing by. Eventually, the couple decides to purchase the house. On their moving day, Alan pets the neighbor's cat while he waits for the movers to arrive. Meanwhile, Marie is inside the house, observing the duck's exit point. After getting all their furniture inside their new home, the couple celebrates and then falls asleep on the couch. The following day, Alan invites his boss, Gerard, and his girlfriend, Jean, to their new house. In the backyard, Gerard examines the wrecked red car, which the real estate agent promised to remove but never did. With his fascination for cars, Gerard suggests having it repaired since it's a good model, but Alan is uninterested. While Gerard continues examining the vehicle, Jean asks Alan where Marie is, claiming that she hasn't seen her yet. While Alan explains that his wife is inside the house, Marie exits the duct, revealing that she entered it the previous night. She then goes to the veranda to meet Jean and Gerard, lying that she just took a shower. During dinner, Jean brings up something that Gerard is hesitant to talk about. After her persistent prodding, Gerard finally reveals his intimate secret. He has an electronic transplant replacement on his private parts, which he can steer and adjust using his smartphone. Hearing this, Alan feels the need to share an unbelievable secret of their own. When he attempts to reveal the time tunnel they have in the basement, Marie quickly interrupts him, asserting that the information should stay between the two of them. Days ago, during the house viewing, Frank revealed that aside from traveling 12 hours into the future, the person who passes through the duct also becomes three days younger. In the present, after Gerard and Jean leave, Marie invites Alain to join her down the time duct. Aware of the time jump that will occur, Alain declines, asserting that he can't be late for work the next day. Disappointed, Marie leaves her husband in the kitchen and decides to enter the duct alone again. Meanwhile, upon arriving home, Gerard worries about what Alain thinks about his electronic transplant, but Jean 
finds his concern about his friend's opinion odd. The next morning, before Alan leaves for work, he goes to the time tunnel's exit point and tells Marie to meet him at dinner, assuming that she hears him. At work, Alan is talking to an irate client on the phone when Serge, the intern, informs him that Gerard is requesting his presence in his office. When Alan arrives in the boss's office, he is curious why Gerard had to send an intern to call him when he could have just called him on his landline. So the boss reveals that he just wants to keep the intern busy. Then, the overthinking Gerard changes the topic, confronting Alan about whether he was impressed by his intimate secret or not. While Alan confirms that he is cool with his boss's electronic member, he admits that it provokes him to philosophically question what being a man really is. After 12 hours have passed, Marie finally comes down from the duct. After taking a shower, she browses her pictures from her youth, admiring the firm and smooth skin she had back then. Moments later, she gets the idea to place a mirror near the duct's exit point and then goes to the basement to enter the time tunnel again. That evening, the self-conscious Gerard gets home from work and talks to Jean about the conversation he had with Alain in his office. He concludes that his employee's wife, Marie, was the one genuinely unimpressed with his transplant, which disappoints him. At the Duval residence, Marie comes out of the duct after another 12 hours have passed. Because of the time she spent in the passage, she missed dinner with her husband and catches him sleeping. After waking up because of his wife's kiss, Alan quickly shares that their neighbor's cat went to the basement earlier. As he chased him out, he noticed that the cat sat on top of the closed hatch to the duct, meowing at him, as if warning him about the time tunnel. Hearing her husband's story, Marie chuckles and thinks that Alan is bored without her, which he agrees with. Suddenly, Marie changes the topic and requests her husband to touch her chest, claiming that she's felt a difference since turning nine days younger. When Alan touches his wife's chest, he says that he doesn't feel any difference, motivating the disappointed Marie to make herself even younger. Seeing how obsessed his wife has become, Alan thinks that they should seal the duct, but Marie re-enters the time tunnel, only to come out of it the next morning with no significant difference in her skin. At work, Alan enters Gerard's office to consult him about a stressful client, but the boss promises to take care of it. To help Alan distress, Gerard invites his employee to a shooting range, where he ends up falling to the ground after shooting a malfunctioning shotgun. Minutes later, an upset Gerard enters the restroom and curses out loud, worrying Alan. As soon as they are in the car, Gerard reveals that his transplant stopped working, suspecting that the impact from the recoiling gun and his fall earlier caused it. To calm Gerard down, Alan suggests getting it repaired, but the boss says that it was made in Japan, which means that no one in Europe knows how to fix it. With no choice, Gerard decides to fly to Japan to have his transplant repaired. Before leaving, he orders Alan to cover for him, coming up with a lie that the reason for his absence is family related. He also tells his employee to give Jean the keys to his place, so she can stay there if she wants to while he's gone. In the Duval home, Marie comes out of the time tunnel again, still disappointed that her skin remains wrinkly. After observing a rotten apple in the kitchen, she decides to take it on her next trip down the dock to see if it'll turn fresh again. Meanwhile, Alain visits Jean in the bookstore where she works to inform her about Gerard's trip and give her the keys to his place. Suspecting that her boyfriend has gone to be with someone else, Jean says that it's not a big deal for her since they aren't married anyway. She then makes a move on Alain, but the married man turns down her advances. When Alain arrives home, he sees Marie's note on the fridge, telling him that they'll see each other tomorrow. Confused about his wife's note, he sends her a voice message, clarifying when tomorrow exactly is because she's been spending too much time in the duct. After making his voice message, Alan suddenly sees the neighbor's cat, which compels him to take it to the basement. He expects the cat to meow at him like it did last time, but to his surprise, it only licks its paw. That evening, Marie finally returns and wakes Alan up, revealing that the rotten apple she took with her became fresh again, ultimately convincing her that the time tunnel's reverse aging feature really works. Overjoyed by her discovery, Marie thinks that the time tunnel can be a key to rejuvenation and immortality, prompting Alan to literally slap her back to her senses. Following this, Marie reminds Alan not to tell anyone about the duct, but the unconcerned husband asserts that he worries more about his work and financial problems. As the couple continues to argue, Alan grabs the apple and takes a bite, only to discover that it's full of ants. Appalled, he immediately worries if the same thing is happening to 
his wife. The following day, the couple consults a doctor to see if it's medically possible for a person's body to be filled with living ants. The doctor responds by giving them a judgmental look regarding their peculiar question. On their way home, a frustrated Alan argues with Marie, who claims she just wants to be pretty again. After realizing that it's only the apple skin that turned younger, he asks her if she wants to be young on the outside but old on the inside. Shortly after arriving home, the offended Marie rushes to the kitchen and then points a knife at Alan, asking him to cut her open to see if ants are inside her. While she holds the knife, she admits that she wants to be young again because she wants to be a famous model. When Alan asks how she would do that, Marie shushes him and then goes to the basement to enter the time tunnel. He tries to make her stay, but she is determined to fulfill her dream. Meanwhile, in Japan, Gerard is lying on the operating table when he decides to call Alan to get Jean a gift for her birthday. Alan, who is already paying for groceries, picks up a plush bag nearby for his boss's girlfriend. Shortly after the call, the surgeon excitedly informs Gerard about his successful operation. However, upon reactivation, the transplant short circuits and malfunctions, leaving the surgeon and the patient frustrated. After shopping, Alan runs into the real estate agent, Frank, in the parking lot. When he asks him if the time dot can cause mental problems, he reminds him that the details regarding the tunnel were included in the fine print on the deed of sale that they signed, which Alan hasn't read. Before leaving, the real estate agent suggests sealing the duct if it causes too much trouble. Complying with Gerard's request, Alan visits Jean to give her the birthday present, only to see her with another man. After a few months, Gerard finally returns to France and meets his new girlfriend Mimi, a flight attendant whom he later marries. However, after catching him cheating on her with his co-worker, she divorces him. After his divorce and a string of failed relationships, Gerard's electronic transplant catches fire while he's driving his new car, causing a fatal accident. Years pass and Marie's obsession with the duck persists, prompting an older Alain to try and fill it in with cement. Alain's attempt is unsuccessful, and Marie eventually reaches her early 20s, enabling her to finally realize her dream of becoming a model. However, during one of her photo shoots, an older man tries to take advantage of her. After the traumatic event, Marie stops modeling, but she continues going down into the duct, and her unhealthy obsession ultimately leads to a mental breakdown. After sending his wife away for hospitalization, Alan finally seals the duct shut. In the mental institution, Marie hides her water glass while the doctor is distracted. As soon as the doctor leaves, Marie breaks the glass and uses a shard to cut her hand open, revealing that, despite her youthful appearance, she's rotten on the inside and infested with crawling ants.